One of the biggest complaints that I hear for a newly credentialed medical coder is that how are they going to get a job when every position that they uh, apply for requires um, experience. So in this video, I am going to give you a few resume tips that will help you land your first medical coding job. Hi everybody, my name is Kat and the credentials that I hold is a CPCA and a CRC. Now, I know that it can be a bit frustrating after you sat down for your tests and you've completed your test and you passed and you finally got that score that you needed and you finally got credentialed and it's off to um, go ahead and you know go for that job and start applying for jobs and you keep getting rejections because you don't have any medical coding experience and you wonder like how can I get a job and get experience if no one gives me a chance. Now, if you are credentialed through uh, like AAPC, for instance, they do have some kind of uh, program called like Practical that will help give you some kind of experience so that you can translate that into, uh, you know, experience so that you can land your first job. But what if that doesn't work or what if you don't um, have access to Practical? How else can you uh, land your first coding job? So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and share with you some resume tips that I think that will help you, um, you know, be more successful um, in that job search and get that first uh, position. So um, the first tip that I would like to say is um, you are a professional. After all, that's in your title, Certified Professional Coder and you uh, need to present yourself as such. So um, what I would suggest for you is to have all the parts of the resume that you may have learned about, you know, in school or whatever business class that you have taken. So that means like have a cover letter prepared, have your resume, and then have your thank you letter and your follow-up email. So let's start with the cover letter first. So with the cover letter, I will say make that personalized. And what I mean by that is get a contact name. That could be the recruiter. That could be your uh, direct coding manager uh, for the position that you are applying for. That could be the manager of the whole revenue cycle, or that could be someone in the HR department that is not the recruiter. Someone in that company that will possibly see this letter or possibly have, um, have to make a decision whether they want to give you the job or not try to obtain a name so that you can personalize that cover letter um to that person and why this is important is because it shows a company that you um, have gone through the trouble of trying to figure out who is the person that's in charge of hiring or in charge of that department so that you can get them to know you personally and you have done a little bit of research because that's important in medical coding um, to, you know, get this to the right person. So if, say, for instance, Mrs. Williams is the recruiter um, and that's the only name that you can get by either going to the website or calling the HR department at that um, company, I will address my cover letter to, you know, to Mrs. Williams. Uh, my name is Catherine and I would like to thank you for taking the time to review the enclosed resume. I hope that this letter finds you well. And um, I think that you will be pleased to know that, you know, like I have a positive attitude, whatever you typically include in your uh, cover letter, that's what you need to include in this cover letter as well. The cover letter should be short maybe one to two paragraphs, just basically giving a little bit of personality to it, but also um, addressing the person and thanking them for reviewing your resume and letting them know what's enclosed. The second tip that I have for you is to um, include the mission statement in your resume. So what I mean by that is again, going on the company's website, researching that company, see what their mission statement is or their culture statement and uh, um, somehow, uh, you know, incorporating that into your resume. Typically I like to incorporate it in that first opening sentence, you know, that sentence that you usually say, um, you know, to obtain a, 
you know, career in medical coding that utilizes my education and credential, you know, to elevate my coding skills. Um, something that's generic like that just don't fly anymore, in my opinion. I would jazz it up a little bit and include the mission statement. So if that company is is big on you know, in diversity and inclusion. Um, if that company is big on making sure that each patient feels like they're the only patient, you know, um, to the to the doctor or to you know, if they are a caring, if they are a culture and caring, um, I would incorporate that in the mission statement. So, for example, I would say something like, um, you know, my goal is to obtain a medical coding position with X Y Z company because it aligns with my core values of, you know, um, showing care and concern for each and every patient, for treating each patient as if they're the only patient in the world, and also uh, to, you know, provide the most um, excellent medical care, regardless of, you know, race or ethnicity or, you know, sexual, orientation or something like that i will you know put it in my own words but also kind of highlight some of their mission statement into you know my opening sentence to show them that i align with your mission statement and your culture and you align with me it also shows them that you actually took the time to review their company standards and you know it'll put you a little bit above you know everyone else's because not a lot of people is willing to go and research the company's culture and mission statement and incorporate that into their resume the third tip that i have for you is to make sure that you use keywords in your resume and what i mean by that is um, going to the company's, uh, you know, the page where it shows you the qualifications or the skill sets required for that medical coding position. For example, if they say that they want someone that has a CPC um, or a CCS or CRC, or if they say they um, want someone that knows the ICD-10, CM guidelines, CPT guidelines, Hicks pig someone that's a team player, someone that has good communication skills, someone that's good with 10 key, someone that is proficient with Word, you know, Excel, whatever the case may be, whatever job or education that you have also um, had experience with those skills, I would basically use the almost the exact keywords that they have listed on their website in your resume to show that you and them kind of mesh y'all together. Like you have exactly what they're looking for. Because a lot of times, um, because companies get so many resumes um, that they just basically have some kind of computer generated that's just looking for certain keywords. And if they have those keywords, then that resume will get forwarded to the recruiter. And so that's why I will use the specific keywords that they have. Of course, I will put it in my own sentence, but I will make sure that the keywords that they have listed on their website under their job description, and I have those skills, I will make sure that I outline that very, very much so similar in my resume. And then um, um, my fourth tip would be to... Uh, include a thank you letter. So after I have submitted my resume and my cover letter, maybe the next day or a couple of days later, I will send a thank you um, email, a thank you letter, just thanking everybody involved for taking the time. Again, it's something similar to your cover letter, but it's a lot, it's just very, very short. Just thank you for taking the time to review my resume and I hope to hear from you soon. And again, here is my contact information. And if you wanna take it a step further, I will include a little video just so they can get a little bit of your personality um, because a lot of times nowadays uh, things are remote and so people are you know able to look at your videos and gain your personalities through your videos and so I will include that but you got to kind of be careful with that because you're working you're addressing a medical facility and a lot of times they don't like to click on links because it could be phishing or you know 
uh, what is it called, fishing wear, spy wear or whatever. And so they are kind of weary uh, with that. So um, at the very least, do include a thank you uh, follow up for that and a phone call, you know, after a couple of days, just to check, check on the status of your resume and go from there. So those are my, a few of my tips that I think that will set you apart from the average medical coder uh, applicant. If you don't have any uh, any experience, highlight what experience you do have. Highlight that you went to school and you obtained your credential. Highlight the percentage that you got on your test. Highlight that you have been practicing. You know, you can include that in your cover letter. Like I've been practicing medical coding every day since I've obtained my credential. I go over op reports. I go over um, physician's notes. I go over all of these things um, over and over again because um, it's important to me to obtain a medical coding job. And, you know, just let them know that how dedicated you are um, in coding because a lot of times, um, it's not due to your lack of experience, it's due to you not picking the correct keywords or having the correct qualifications that a company is looking for. Because a lot of companies like new coders because they can kind of mold them into their culture instead of coders bringing their old um, knowledge or old ways to this company. Like if they have a new coder, they can kind of mold that coder into what they need them to be for that particular company. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, um, if something isn't clear, go ahead and leave me a comment below. And I hope that you take the time and you like this video. And if this was helpful for you, let me know by subscribing. I really appreciate it. And please share this video if you think that someone else will, um, will help, will find this helpful. All doing all of that will help you too to know that this channel is beneficial and um, it'll help me get seen by more people. So Go ahead and do me a favor and subscribe, like, and share. So until the next time, coders, my name is Kat, and I hope to see you soon.